Welcome to Word of Mouth, where dentists talk about how oral health is related to overall health, which is also known as the oral systemic connection. The information provided on this video is not intended as medical advice and should not be interpreted as such. If you seek medical advice, please consult with a healthcare professional. Also, the information in this video represents the thoughts of the individual speakers and the views expressed in this interview do not necessarily reflect the views of the IAOMT. So welcome to Word of Mouth. We're here today with Dr. Johann Lechner, who is a member of the IOMT. I'm Dr. Michael Gossweiler, also a member of the IOMT, and also one of the members of the uh, Fundamentals Committee. We are here today to talk about NICO and fatty degenerative bone lesions with Dr. Lechner. Welcome, Dr. Lechner. Glad you're taking the time. It's my great honor to be able to talk to you today. So one of the things uh, we would like to uh, first cover is your background and how, how did you get started in biologic dentistry coming from a traditional background? Basically, it might be an intuitive decision. Mm -hmm. mm, but uh, I started my dental work uh, in practice with other dentists who already were practicing this holistic aspect. Mm -hmm. And what I could see is uh, removing a root filling here and doing a cavitation there. Mm -hmm. The patients could walk again, they lost their eye problems and so on and so on. And um, by these events, uh, of course, I got interested in the, also in the medical and scientific background. Mm -hmm. So you had a, uh, in your training, you had a medical background prior to coming to dental school or? Uh, no, when I finished dental school. When you finished dental when school. When I finished dental school, I was interested in this aspect mm -hmm. more intuitively. Right. Mm, but uh, I must admit, in, especially in Germany, mm -hmm. we have a great tradition of this holistic aspects, yes. including homeopathy right. and so on. So you had already been exposed to that prior to going to dental school then? Uh, yes. Yes, yeah. okay. Uh, so I, I got contact with Dr. Issels, okay. which is also known here right, yes. in the US. Right. Uh, uh, later, when I had my own clinic, I worked together with Dr. Issels. Ah, okay. So then when you started this, um, you, would, you would observe these, but then how did you then start to move into doing uh, cavitations? Yeah, these cavitations, where the German name is Kieferostitis, mm -hmm. uh, was practiced uh, for, for ages mm -hmm. in Germany. Yeah. And uh, there was the theory that many, many diseases could be cured eliminating this kefir osteitis. And so when you started out in this, did you have a lot of resistance? Were there a lot of people who were skeptical or that were pushing back against this, uh, this idea that you had that this was somehow connected with yes, these yes. other this, problems? This is a good question. Uh, nevertheless, the individual success, right. the individual healing processes we induced and we had, um, from official sides, mm -hmm. uh, we got uh, resistance. And this was basically uh, the reason why I concentrated uh, in the scientific work I just presented in the To give it some validity. With the yes, medical to, and, and to build up cred scientific credibility. Right. And I always say to save myself right. in my everyday work. Very good. So I noticed that uh, you've done a lot of work with uh, Volker von Baer in uh, mm -hmm. Berlin. How did that connection come about? Uh, Volker von Baer is one of these immunologists. He owns a, a big lab in Berlin, mm -hmm. uh, who was open to our, uh, to our ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> for these phenomena, uh, we didn't have any explanations mm -hmm. on a biochemical level. Right. Uh, he gave us a chance to develop lab mechanisms, lab processes, yes. where we could verify that this, what we are thinking, or what we are doing, uh, can be proved by lab data. Very good. So this then uh, developed into this whole series of uh, papers that you've published and uh, we were, uh, we had a nice presentation uh, that you had done previously. And I noticed, of course, that 
from the literature that I think it was like half of the articles on this uh, were published by yourself as at least one of the co-authors on these papers. Uh, why is it that you think that there really hasn't been more of an interest in this? I mean, you know, you were pointing out in some of your presentations that uh, there's certainly connections here, but uh, there really doesn't seem to be very much interest in the um, outside of uh, probably a rather small group. Yeah, you're right. In the moment, this is true. Yes. Yeah, but uh, with these scientific papers, uh, I presume we have now the weapons mm -hmm. to against all these resistances. Ah, okay. Uh, we saw, and um, I think the the problem is just that. Uh, medicine is organized in very, very uh, specific lanes, mm -hmm. and uh, doctors don't love to leave their lane. Right. So it's it's this kind of, uh, if I can interpret, this kind of silo mentality that yes. we have these types of lesions, and there is really no yeah. other connections yeah. anywhere else. The question is, how do you get people open-minded? Right. So. I'm just going to go into some speculation on your part about these things because I know your uh, research interests are very specific. But um, you had mentioned in your lectures about the uh, how the uh, levels of runtus in some of these lesions were much higher, for instance, in the bone lesions in the jaw versus even found in breast cancer patients. So what do you think? that it is physiologically about the bone of the jaws versus, say, breast tissue that maybe is causing this concentration of this type of thing. Any Yeah, any ideas this is just, just the comparison between these concentrations. Right. They found it in, in breast cancer, right. we found it in jawbone. And the question is, um, which aspect could influence the other, the other one. one? Right. And so it's a question of concentration. Where does the concentration go to? Oh, to. And um, <clears throat> uh, the, the, the main aspect of this is the chronicity. 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 Right, right. And the, 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 the subtle element uh, that nobody is really aware of this process. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, uh, I think we have in the climate change, mm -hmm. we have a good example. Yeah? It's not one eruption of a volcano which is damaging the climate mm -hmm. for several years, but then it goes back. But these are all these um, hundreds of billions of subtle inductions, of subtle uh, provocations which change a biological system. And for me, a biological system, mm -hmm. the human, Right. The human body reacts in a similar way as the climate. So what we should take care of is just to take away all these subtle, mm, uh, really not acute um, uh, insults. Perhaps. Insults. Yeah. yeah. Uh, patient doesn't feel it. Right. But at the end, it sums up, and then the whole system changes breaks down. or collapses or breaks. Down. So what would be some of these uh, subtle injuries that you refer to? Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you for the question. Yeah. I don't want to be monomanic right, and, right, and right, just right, concentrate right. on these right. jawbone cavitations. Right. Of course, it's heavy metals in the mouth, yes. blocking enzymes, yes. creating these uh, oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. uh, it is malnutrition. It's, of course, also uh, root fillings, yes. toxins, which might come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's even, uh, in my eyes, the psycho-emotional background. Yeah. Uh, that means uh, bad negative uh, sentences, bad negative emotional programming. Right. Yeah. Start to add to that because it, it starts to affect this balance between the sympathetics, parasympathetics perhaps? Yes. Yes. That's okay. the point. Yeah. Uh, chronic stress. Right. Chronic stress brings up the sympathetic stress. Right. Uh, and, and without it, a parasympathetic re relax, right. your body exhausts. Can't, can't heal gets, properly. Yes. Yeah. Very good. So um, one of the kind of exciting developments, I think, in, in at least for a clinician as myself in trying to diagnose these things is the ability to be able to start to diagnose these types of lesions uh, in a non-invasive manner. 
Certainly the, uh, the CBCT has been a useful tool, uh, but of course one of the problems is that if we want to go in to reassess or to check these areas, we have to employ radiation each time that we do so. So uh, many years ago we had this uh, machine uh, called the uh, Cavitat. Now uh, you've essentially kind of brought this machine back with some modifications uh, called the Cavital. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us about this and, and how you decided to bring this back. Uh, when I was in the U.S. Um, 20 years ago, yes. I saw the mm -hmm. Cavitat, the old Cavitat. Right. Uh, I bought two of these machines because I was fascinated by mm -hmm. this idea mm -hmm. uh, to do um, dental diagnostic without radiation and especially built for these jawbone cavitations. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> unfortunately, the company closed down, was closed down for whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. And so to keep up the interest and to keep up the possibility to uh, demonstrate or to document these jawbone cavitations by pictures mm -hmm. made me develop my own Cavitat machine, we mm -hmm. call it now Cavitat. Tau. Mm -hmm. Tau means transalveolar ultrasonography because just in contrast to the normal use of ultrasound machines in medicine, mm -hmm. we are not working with reflections. We have to send the waves, the ultrasound waves, through the bone. And this makes it more complicated. But the use of ultrasound in medicine, the harmless use, uh, it's well this known. is proven. Yes. This yeah. is well known. Right. Yes. No problem at all. So the, um, where do you see this uh, perhaps headed in the future now? Uh, the the Cavitao, uh, if this uh, is, uh, we hope, eventually approved for use here in the U.S., um, where do you see your research going in the future? I mean, do you see the Cavitao as part of that, or is that uh, no? The, the Cavitao, the Cavitao is is my personal right. uh, main focus now, of ah, course, okay. of course. And we have um, uh, two, we want to cover two items. Okay. Uh, item number one is why I'm here mm -hmm. inside the EAOMT, mm -hmm. inside a group uh, of holistic thinking dentists. Dentist. Yeah. And the other group is uh, where we are aiming to uh, are the implantologists. Because uh, this is also well proven and well known, a lot of implants, uh, implants fail because the, the bone is not healthy, which has to bear the implant. And there are also scientific uh, research, not from me, but mm -hmm. from, uh, from German uh, universities. and. Um, uh, here we give the implantologist a tool where he can um, where he can check the intensity of the bone density mm -hmm. before he does the implant, and the implant doesn't just drop out again. So, um, I guess I'm I'm looking at this from the standpoint of then. Uh, uh, research and outcomes, mm -hmm. because this I, I, I think this would be, very frankly, a very useful tool uh, for researchers mm -hmm. to be able to conduct uh, prospective studies mm -hmm. on this then. Um, so uh, have you made any connections with any universities in Germany or we in the are US? About. We are about. We, we are about two to. universities, two okay. professors who are working on this. Okay, very good. Uh, one pathologist, and one of these guys already was um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to reveal any names. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but the pathologist is already working with our machines because he's working on dead bodies. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have, we have to wait another four weeks to get the official approval. As long as we don't have the official approval, the other professor cannot work on his patients. Ah, I see, okay. Yeah. This is not allowed. Very good. I'm so, allowed to do this right. inside the research. Of course, we measure for more than one year now uh, at our patients the validity of our ultrasound machine. Very good. And we compare it with uh, CBCTs, mm -hmm. to the Hounsfield units. Right. Um, we have a great uh, possibility 
to precisely build up a logarithmic uh, figure uh, with each area we measure in this ultrasound machine, mm -hmm. and that we precisely compare these uh, Hounsfield units to the with these our uh, logarithmic outcome. Yes. This is a very scientifically based uh, approach. Okay. Very good. Um, any other things you would like to add before we wrap up our lecture? Yeah, we, um, <clears throat> uh, I hope that this ultrasound machine yeah, mm -hmm. contributes to a wider aspect. Yeah, that um, uh, the, the, the problem in the education of dentists mm -hmm. is that they suppose teeth are independent from the rest of the body. And this is an aspect uh, which modern medicine uh, basically uh, can easily contradict, mm -hmm. especially by this tool I use, the cytokines, measuring the cytokines. Because cytokines are an instrument where the body works from up, from top to toe. Mm -hmm. Right. It's Each organ is involved mm -hmm. in this pattern. Right. It's a communication tool that affects various areas of the body. Exactly. So, well, very good. So, thank you very much, Dr. Leitner, you. for your time. So, for those of you who'd like more information, please go to wordofmouth.iomt.org. There you can find more information on this and other topics related to biologic and holistic dentistry. Thank you. This podcast has been brought to you by the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology the IAOMT. The IAOMT strives for safer dentistry and a healthier world. We are a network of over 1,000 dentists, health professionals, and scientists who research dental products and practices, including the risks of mercury fillings, fluoride, root canals, and jawbone osteonecrosis. We are a nonprofit organization and have been dedicated to our mission of protecting public health and the environment since we were founded in 1984. You can learn more about us at www.iaomt.org and www.thesmartchoice.com. The information provided on this video is not intended as medical advice and should not be interpreted as such. If you seek medical advice, please consult with a healthcare professional. Also, the information in this video represents the thoughts of the individual speakers and the views expressed in this interview do not necessarily reflect the views of the IAOMT